Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, part eight of the $4,000 Ultimate No Compromise System Build video series. If you are new here, parts one through seven will be linked in the video description below. This video is all about Windows storage spaces and bulk hard drive data management. The previous videos, part one, parts review. Part two is the long vlog that explains why all the parts are in here, the decision making behind it, and so on. Part three is the actual build of this computer. Part four is Windows install, Windows update, firmware, BIOS, etc. Part five, Windows performance review. Part six, overclocking. Part seven was the solid state drive performance video. And part eight is Windows storage spaces and bulk hard drive data storage. Now, I have got four eight terabyte uh, Seagate archive hard drives in this machine. Why? I have lots of data to store. These drives are intended to bulk store, long-term storage my data. I'm not going to run programs from them. I'm not going to access data from them very often. I frankly expect to copy most of my files to these drives and never use them again. However, I want to keep them and I want to keep them secure. Furthermore, Hard drives fail. Actually, all drives fail eventually, but hard drives do tend to fail from time to time. And so I'm going to be setting these up in a Windows storage spaces, a total of 32 terabytes of storage, 24 of which will actually be usable. Why? Something called parity, essentially RAID 5, but it's not RAID 5. It's actually better in some ways. I'm going to talk about the differences and the details there in a minute. But one of the drives will be used to record a parity bit of the other three drives. This will allow me to suffer the loss of any one of the four hard drives and I will lose no data. Please note, huge disclaimer, this is not backup. RAID is not backup. Duplicating your files in your computer is not backup. I will link in the video description below to a video I did on backup, both to external drives, to USB thumb drives, and online cloud backup. If you're interested in how to backup your data, please go check that out. But in short, if your data is sitting here on the desk, whether it's on three or four different drives inside the machine, or even an external drive sitting next to your computer, you do not have a backup of your data. Why? Fire, theft, lightning strikes, user error. If your data is in one spot, there's too many ways you can lose it, even if you have 20 copies of it on 20 drives laid across your desk. They're all in one spot. You have to have your data located somewhere else off premises to actually have a backup. Now, I'm not going to talk about backup anymore. That's in the video below. But in short, the purpose of this is to protect me against the loss of a hard drive, not fire, theft, lightning strikes, etc., computer viruses. This is all about just hard drive failure which for me is my biggest single risk. Now I do have all this data backed up online to the cloud using Backblaze Online Backup, which is an excellent service for $5 a month unlimited backup. I've got many terabytes of data backed up. It's really quick. There's a link at the very bottom of the video description to go do a free trial on that. And if you're interested in giving it a try, no credit card required, go click my link if you wanna support me, I'd appreciate it. Go give it a try. And if you like it, it's five bucks a month. And if you don't, then it didn't cost you a penny. Anyway. These four drives are going to bulk store my data. Now, somebody is bound to say, wait a minute, why in the world do you need 32 terabytes of space? Well, I do. Everybody's data needs are different. First of all, I shoot these videos in 4K and I film a lot of video. Furthermore, I keep the original videos as well as the rendered videos that are uploaded to YouTube. Now, I don't keep all the scrap video, but the source videos that are actually used to render the YouTube videos, I keep all the originals. So I keep the originals at 100 megabits per second and the encoded videos to YouTube are at 50 megabits a second and it adds up after a while. My current machine at home has 16 terabytes of space, half of this, four four terabyte drives. I have those set up in a Windows storage basis. So I have 12 effectively. It's, it's getting full. I mean, it, there's still room left on it, but it's getting full. It would be full by the end of 2016 if I didn't upgrade. So this, this is due. This is going to be necessary for me. Obviously, this is not necessary for most people, but it's necessary for me. Please note, in order to do a parity, you need at least three drives. In order to um, suffer the loss of two drives, you need at least seven. So three drives for one drive failure or seven drives for two drives of failure. Now, there is something else called mirroring and striping. Let me briefly mention them, and I won't, I won't come back to them. Mirroring basically takes two drives and duplicates the data between them. If you only have two drives, 
Now this isn't very space efficient, but speed wise it's really quick. It's basically the performance of the one drive. With two drives, if you say get two four terabyte or two two terabyte drives, you can set them up in a Windows storage spaces mirror. And the files are duplicated across the drives and if you lose one drive, then the other drive's data is still secure. You can replace the defective drive with a new drive and Windows will then restore the data back to both drives, restoring your mirror. Striping is, there's no data redundancy. It's the same as RAID 0. Uh, mirroring is RAID 1, this is RAID 0. Striping spreads your data across all the drives with no data protection. The danger is, let's say you take two, three, four drives and you RAID 0 them. If any one drive fails, you lose everything. It's fine, you can get really good performance, but not as much as most people think. And what's sitting on the screen throughout all this talking is a point to make regarding RAID 0. On the left side of the screen, I have three of these drives set up in a striped RAID array, RAID 0. The one on the right side closest to me is a single 8 terabyte drive. These are, I did a, th a 32 terabyte test in Crystal Dismark with all three drives in an insecure RAID 0, meaning if any one of those three drives were to fail, you lose everything on all three drives. We get 443 megabytes per second sequential read speed and 521 megabytes per second sequential write speed. Sounds great, doesn't it? That's SSD level performance, yay! Look at the one on the right. 192 megabytes per second sequential uh, read speed and 192 megabytes per second sequential write speed. Now, notice, with three drives, the performance did not triple, but it doubled. If you do two drives, it'll be somewhere in the middle, about 350 or so. Striping doesn't outright double your performance. It can come close. It depends on the drives. It depends on the system and whatnot. We're also running into overall limitations of the serial ATA bus and the ports and the chipset. So there's a limit to how high you can make this go, depending upon your computer and configuration. However, look at the random performance. Let's say you want to stripe some hard drives and you think, well, I'm not ready for an SSD. I'm going to make my boot drive a hard drive and I'll RAID 0 them. This used to be more common. Now that SSDs have come down in price, most people who want performance just put an SSD in. But for a long time, people are like, well, I'll just get two hard drives, put them in RAID 0, and I'll double my performance. Not in normal applications, you won't. On the left-hand side in RAID 0 with a Q depth of 1, we have 0.6 one megabytes per second and with a single drive we have 0.51. Yes, it's faster, not by much. Now why am I talking about random at Q depth of one? Because that's what most people's desktop environment really is. Whenever you see amazing performance numbers, they're usually not realistic because they're under a heavy Q depth and a heavy load. Sequential performance looks great. But Windows doesn't run sequentially, games don't load sequentially, Windows updates and program updates and multitasking is not sequential access, it's random. Let's pretend that you're a heavy multitasker. Now, of course, you should be on an SSD, but with a Q depth of 32, we have 3.8 megabyte per second read speed, because you do far more reads than writes, versus 1.6 megabytes per second on one drive. Now, that's double the performance, but it took three drives to get there. And furthermore, 3.8 is not very exciting compared to 1.6 when you consider this is a Q depth of 32, which is not realistic for the desktop environment, and when you consider that the 850 EVO in here will do 400 megabytes per second Q depth 32 random reads. So you're kind of going, but I'm, but I'm going to get more speed. If you want more speed, get an SSD. That's all there is to it. Hard drives in 2016 are for bulk data storage, video files, music files, etc. Solid state drives are for programs, games, etc. I can't use a hard drive anymore. The performance is too intolerable. I know some people say, oh, SSDs can't be that much faster. Oh, yes, they are. Uh, they're miles ahead. I've done multiple videos on my channel comparing the SSD to the hard drive, both. Um, in general Windows performance review as well as game performance load time. It's not even close. 
Uh, even in games that aren't necessarily designed to take advantage of it, Battlefield 4, for example, more than doubles its load uh, performance on a SSD. It, sh it cuts it by half. And Windows reboot speed? Oh, my goodness. Some laptops, for example, will take two, two and a half minutes to do a full reboot on a, fi on a 5400 RPM hard drive. 20 seconds, 20, 25 seconds on an SSD. That's a big difference. Anyway, moving on from that. This video is not about what you see here. This is simply to show you striped data performance. All right, let's get rid of this. One more point that I want to make. Um, I mentioned striped and I mentioned mirroring. We're not going to mention it again. If you want data security and you have two drives, mirroring is fine. And I'll show you the checkbox when we come to it. Mirroring and parity simply has to do with how much drive space you lose. Once you go beyond two drives, your percentage of lost space gets better. With three drives in parity, you lose 33% of your storage to drive protection. With four drives, you lose 25%. With five drives, you lose 20% and so on. So as you add drives, the percentage of space you lose to the drive protection goes down, but the risk of any one drive failing goes up. If you had 50 hard drives all running at the same time, actually one parity drive wouldn't be enough because you have too much risk that if one drive fails, by the time it rebuilds, you'd lose a second. But that's why there's something called uh, RAID 6 or actually double parity where you have two parity drives so you can actually suffer multiple losses and not lose your data. That's neither here nor there. Why is store Windows storage space is good? I could absolutely set up a RAID 5 array using the chipset on this motherboard in the system BIOS and not use Windows storage spaces. I've got these four hard drives plugged into the ports on the motherboard that would let me set up a four drive RAID 5 array. I'd have 24 terabytes of usable space. Why don't I? Windows storage spaces provides for, in many respects, easier monitoring. It's in the control panel, it's easy to see, but most importantly, it's very easy to change the size of your array. I have, if you watch the build video, I have two more free serial ATA ports on this motherboard. I have two free drive cages. I fully plan at some point in the future to add two more eight terabyte drives to this system. I can easily put those drives in, come into Windows Storage Spaces, and increase the size of the array without losing data or without having to move it off and rebuild the array with more drives. Most, there are exceptions, most hardware RAID, either through your chipset or through an add-in card, cannot change the size of the array once it's built. If you want to expand your space, you must get all your data off the drives, destroy that array, create a new array with more drives, and then move all your data back. That's nuts. Windows storage spaces will let you dynamically change the size of your array, add and remove drives without having to remove any of your data. That is an awesome feature. I'm using it at home. I have expanded my arrays before and I've tested it by pulling a plug on one of the drives to make sure it does in fact still work and it does and I plugged a different drive in. I will be demoing all of that for you. This is going to be a long video. If you've looked at the length of this video and go holy smokes that's a lot. Well there's a lot to do here. All right. So Windows Storage Spaces is my preference over hardware RAID if you need hardware RAID, then you're beyond the scope of this video. There are people who need hardware RAID. If you've got 50 drives, that's, that's a different situation. But um, the first thing I'm going to do, now I already have the drives configured. I have to unconfigure them in order for Windows Storage Spaces to work. I'm going to come into Disk Management. And yes, I will show you all this. Let me bring this up. Note, if you're creating this on blank drives, you don't have to do this. I'm going to show you what a blank drive Windows Storage Space setup looks like. But what I have to do first is I have to remove the existing arrays that I created. Now the Y drive on here is the uh, 24 terabyte drive. And I am going to, let me make sure, 3x, delete volume, yes, and that's deleting. And then my simple Z, and I'm going to delete volume. Yes. What I've done here 
is I've deleted the 8 terabyte and the 24 terabyte uh, drive volumes that I had set up in here in uh, disk management in Windows. You can get to disk management by right clicking on the start button and coming up to disk management. It's about halfway up the list and basically this is how you can partition and change and format and do some things with drives that you cannot do in Windows File Explorer. This is the configuration it was in when I built the machine and first turned it on. So I've reverted it to its standard config. If you buy drives, put them in your machine and do nothing, this is what it will look like. I'm now going to close disk management. From this point, this is what you would do with brand new drives. I'm going to uh, press the Windows key to open up the start menu and I'm going to type in storage spaces. There it is. Let me maximize that. Use storage spaces to save files to two or more drives to help protect you from a drive failure. Not backup, drive failure. Storage spaces also lets you easily add more drives if you run low on capacity. That is a wonderful feature. If you don't see task links, click change settings. Create new pool. It automatically detects that we have unallocated drives and sees them. Wonderful. Now these are the unformatted drives. You can use formatted drives. This sees my four SSDs in the system that are not the boot drive. You can't do anything with the boot drive. You cannot use Windows storage spaces for a boot drive and you shouldn't anyway. I could, if I wanted to, use my four SSDs as part of the Windows storage spaces as well. And this is what's nice about Windows storage spaces. I mentioned before you can expand it. Windows storage spaces does not require all the drives to be the same size. For example, I said that I have two open drive bays and plan to expand this in the future. What if a year from now, 12 terabyte drives are the same price as eight terabyte? I could buy two 12 bear or just one 12 terabyte drive and stick them in there and add them to the array. Now you lose a little bit of efficiency when you have varying drive sizes in one array that is a parity, but you gain most of the space. And you can use this to leapfrog your drives. For example, let's say one year from now, I buy two 12 terabyte drives. I stick those in here, um, I expand the array to all six drives, and I carry on merry and happy. One year later, I'm running low on space and it's ready for more drives. But let's say at that point, which is two years from now, 16 terabyte drives are the same price as these. Maybe 16 terabyte drives make sense at that point two years from now. Great. I'll buy two of those and I have the option to further expand my array, but maybe I'm ready to start retiring the older drives. I generally do not use drives that are more than three years old personal preference, but the drives come with a three-year warranty and I use them to the end of the warranty and then get rid of them because frankly, um, that's just my personal thing. Now, you can in Windows Storage Spaces tell it to remove drives from, array, from an array and if there's room, now it'll tell you you can't do it if there's no room, but if you have enough free space, it will move the data off those drives and move it to the new drives or, to the, or it'll spread it evenly across the other drives. If you're tight on space, do it one drive at a time. So I could, for example, mark one of the eight terabyte drives as please remove from the array. It'll take all the data off that drive and spread it across the other five drives. I can then take that eight terabyte drive out, set it on the desk. I can take my new 16 terabyte drive, stick it in, come into Windows uh, storage spaces and add it to the array. It'll then rebalance the data across those drives. I can then mark the second 8 terabyte drive to remove and it will move the data off. Take that out and put the second 16 terabyte in. Wonderful! A year later, 20 terabyte drives are now reasonable. Great! Buy two of those. I can mark the two last 8 terabyte drives in here for removal. Take them out, put the two 20s in, and it'll rebalance. And you never have to move your data again. You can just keep rebalancing between the drives. You could do one drive a year, for example, if you wanted to, and just slowly upgrade them one at a time as larger capacities become less expensive over time without having to worry about rebuilding RAID arrays, copying your files to a new hard drive. You never have to worry about it. It does it all in the background for you. I like Windows Storage Spaces. This, is, it, this has made my data management so much easier. Now, I'm not going to use my formatted drives. I'm going to use the unformatted drives. I'm going to click create pool. And we're back. So I learned something interesting. 
Because I had partitions on the drives already, which I showed you I deleted them because I had the benchmark results at the beginning of the video, it would not create the storage space. Simple solution, reboot. I rebooted the computer and it worked perfectly. So I've, we're back at the same spot again. I edited that out, of course, but now that I discovered that's what's needed, we hit create pool, preparing drives, and it will work perfectly this time. Now we have several choices. So if you have any problems in error messages, make sure you do a reboot and you have unallocated drives. So storage space, I am going to capitalize the S, but beyond that, I'll leave it called storage space. I'm going to drop the drive letter down and change it to S just because that's my personal preference, leaving uh, the drive system to NTFS. Resiliency type, this is where most of you will need to make a choice. Now, if you have two drives, you have really one choice two-way mirror. Now you have simple no resiliency if you want, but again, you have no protection against the failure of a drive. With a two-way mirror, you have the protection, but you also lose half of your space. Three-way mirrors are a specialized tool that most people shouldn't use, and then you have parity. Now I want to show you the size difference between two-way two mirror and parity. With four drives, the total pool size is 29.1 terabytes. Wait a minute, you say, 29, I thought you said it was 32. Four times eight terabytes is 32 terabytes. Yes, but that's because hard drive companies measure drives in base 10 and Windows measures in base two. It's been this way for 40 years since the dawn of hard drives way back a very long time ago and it's never going to change. In short, it's correct. If you ever wanna verify this, you can open up Windows Calculator, take whatever you think your drive size is, in this case, 32 terabytes, and multiply times 0.93. Why? That takes off about 7%. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. 29.76 terabytes. Now this says 29.1. Close enough, it's in the ballpark. Windows Storage Spaces also uses a little bit for its own overhead, so it won't be exact. Furthermore, if you look at the size maximum, we have 14.5. Now that is, in fact, 50% of 29.1. But we don't want to give up all that space. We're going to switch to parity. So resilience type to parity, and we now have 19.3 terabytes of space. Now, for those of you good at basic math, you'll discover something's missing. What? Well, at 29.1, 29.1 divided by 4 times 3, we should have about 21.8 terabytes of usable space. Why is it 19.3? Good question. Windows Storage Spaces does not quite give you all the space of all of your drives. A true hardware RAID 5 does in fact give you a little bit more space, but you lose flexibility in the process in terms of being able to expand and shrink and make changes. So if you want every last ounce of space, this motherboard absolutely will set up a hardware RAID 5 on these five drives, and I could absolutely do that. But by doing that, I can't I don't have the flexibility to change it. I can't expand it to six drives or eight drives. And frankly, I find that limitation a pain in the neck. If we subtract the 19.3, somewhere in there, two and a half terabytes of space was lost. Divided by those three drives, roughly 0.8 terabytes of the three data drives is being used up by Windows Storage Spaces. Go figure. But the flexibility to me is worth it. So we have 19.3 terabytes of actual usable space. Note, this does scale. My 16 terabytes worth of drives at home, I have four four terabyte drives in my computer at home set up in the same parity array. 19.3 is about double what's in that machine. So we'll hit create storage space. Now you can't see it at the moment, but I've actually removed the side panel from this computer. Why? Well, I'm gonna copy a few files over to it, not a lot, but I'm gonna copy some files over. Then I'm going to shut the machine down and I'm gonna pull one of the data cables out of the back of the drive. Then I'm gonna turn it back on. Now I'll trim that out because otherwise it will take some time. And I'm gonna boot it back up to show you what it looks like. Now, to truly simulate it, I would just pull it while it's live, but I don't wanna do that. So, it's not good for the drive, it's just, the motherboard is not set up to hot swap them. Um, it can be, but it's not, and so I don't want to do that. So we're not going to do that. 
Formatting, here we go, and we're formatted. So, there is a drop down button called Physical Drives. Manage Storage Spaces is in Control Panel. If you ever go into Control Panel, and by the way, I don't mean Settings, Start, Settings, this is not where you find storage spaces. It's in the old Control Panel. Right click on your Start menu and come up to Control Panel. And actually, it won't, if you've never been there before, it looks like this. First thing you want to do is click the drop down and change it to large icons, and then storage spaces is right here. Click the physical drives and you can see the four drives that we're using. Everything is green and OK. We've got 19.2 terabytes of space. We have uh, only three gigabytes of cool pool capacities being used. And you may say, where's the three gigabytes? Windows Storage Spaces uses a little bit to manage itself. But what you can see is what percentage is actually used on each drives. There's also, let me hit change settings, prepare for removal buttons. It, as I said earlier, if you want to take a drive out and replace it with something bigger, prepare for removal. We'll get all the data off the drive, redistribute it to the other drives, allow you to take that drive out, put in something else, and then redistribute the data back. Compared to having to break the array and rebuild and find places to move the data, this is very nice. Now, Microsoft is not the first company in the world to come up with something like this. Other operating systems have had this before. But I use Windows, and so this is nice. This also, by the way, is not new to Windows 10. Windows 8 had this as well, but I didn't start using it till Windows 10 because my personal machine skipped 8. I had Windows 7 on my personal machine until 10 came out. So now that this is good, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and copy some files to it. I'm going to come over to my 950 Pro. I have renamed my drive. In case you're curious, I did rename them to make it easier to figure out which is which. And I've uh, got two games on here, World of Tanks and World of Warships. I am going to, in fact, I'll just do one of them. I'll copy World of Warships over to the storage spaces, paste. Now, it starts off pretty well because storage spaces uses a small initial cache to accelerate short bursts of write performance to the drive. Once that cache is used up, the performance drops off a cliff. On my machine at home, on sustained write transfers, I generally get about 30 megabytes a second. And that is on four four terabyte hard drives. It's long-term storage. You write it once, I do a transfer, I minimize it, and I go do something else. It's not a big deal. Large copies will take a long time. So you may want to break them up and do them in burst rather than one massive copy. Read speeds, awesome. Write speeds are very slow. In fact, right now, we are currently getting, now these are small files. We're copying a lot of, it'll speed up here in a second as we get to it. We're currently getting, oh, we'll look at that burst. That won't last. 400, 300, 100. Boy, that looks nice. And we're down, it's used up the cache. If you only have to write a, a couple of gigabytes of files, it'll be really quick. If you want to write 30 or 40 gigs of files, it'll be really quick for a short time. We're currently getting 30 megabytes a second with an estimated time remaining of 12 minutes to copy 20 gigabytes of files. And these are fairly sequential. There's only 116 files left and it isn't going to go any faster than this. I could, if I wanted to, take the existing storage space out of my machine at home Put it in here, and it will migrate over. The nice thing about storage spaces is it migrates from machine to machine. And then I could replace the drives one at a time. But because it would have to reshuffle the data, that really wouldn't be an improvement. When I take this home, I'm going to set it up at a different desk than my main machine. And I'm not going to switch to this until all my programs are on it, until it's signed in with all my accounts, until I've moved my data over. And I've, I've copied, not moved, copied all of my data from my existing storage space to this storage space. I'm going to leave it on my old one for probably a month or two to make sure that under not days, but months, 
this remains reliable. Now I have all this, all my data backed up online, but it would be a pain to retrieve. I don't really want to, so I'm going to leave it in both places for a period of time before I do something else with those drives. It's gonna take a long time to copy the file. It's gonna be one of those things where I pick chunks of it and do it overnight, and it may take a week to get the eight and a half terabytes of data I have over to this array. So it, it's the price you pay for parity. If I had chose mirror, two-way mirror rather than parity, the performance would be very quick. It's the parity calculation that just destroys the performance. But if we did a hardware RAID 5 using the chipset and we do it in the BIOS with the Intel rapid storage technology, it wouldn't be much better. Why? Because it's not hardware RAID, it's software RAID. Real hardware RAID are three to $500 controller cards. You can buy a real hardware RAID card that will come with anywhere from 125 megs to several gigabytes of RAM, a real processor on board that does all the calculations on board, and those are relatively quick, but they're expensive. Those were originally designed many, many years ago for situations where companies mostly would actually want to run databases and other things on a hardware RAID 5, not because they had four drives, but because they had 40. And they would have 40 drives and they might have 37 of them live. And they might have three of the 37 as parity drives. So they're really running a mixed array where they would have 34 drives of data, three live drives of parity, and three hot spares so that if one of the parity, if one of the 37 drives failed, the system immediately had a backup. No hardware changes required. Nobody had to be standing there to do it. The system could fall over, bring one of the hot spares online, and start moving it over. And if another one failed, it would bring another spare online. And the system would automatically, at the time, page probably rather than call, but it could email, call, page the network administrator who was on duty who needed to get down there and figure out what the problem was. Such systems were expensive. Solid state drives didn't exist. Solid state drives are very rapidly taking over the data center, rendering all of this completely pointless. Even companies like Google, who have petabytes of data, are starting to replace their hard drives with solid state drives, huge quantities of them. Google and Facebook is a, are massive buyers of solid state drives. And in fact, I believe it was Facebook recently, and if I'm wrong, well, I apologize. It was Facebook or Google, I think it was Facebook, that recently asked for QLC SSDs because they only have a right to them once. Almost everything they store is write once, read a whole lot, or read occasionally. Have you ever wondered how Facebook, for example, pulls up pictures that were uploaded five years ago that no one's looked at in four years, and yet when you go browse through the pages or you search for something, you expect Facebook to pull it up in two seconds? All of it, the videos, the picture, the data, the posts, the likes, all has to be live. This stuff can't be stored on tape. It would take five to 10 minutes to restore, even on a high-speed tape autoloader. 20 seconds is a long time for people to wait when you're browsing the web because people browsing the web don't understand the, the infrastructure behind it. And so they have tens of thousands, if not millions of PCs. I don't really know the number, but they've got a huge number of computers and huge banks of hard drives that keep all this data live. Worse, they have to keep multiple copies. Facebook probably has 50 to 100 hard drives a day fail on them or more, I don't know what the number is, but it's a lot. So hard drive failures are normal for them. They have hard drive fails all the time. They just, they, it's part of their system. It can't be a big deal. They're moving to SSDs. SSD prices are dropping and the performance difference is night and day. Hard drives will be around for a while, 10 years, give or take. They might be gone completely. Solid state drives will take a while to become price parity with hard drives. They may never quite get there. But what happens when a one terabyte SSD is just using today's prices, $60, and a one terabyte hard drive is $50? Power consumption, reliability, size, 
heat data center space, you know, it doesn't even have to get that cheap before they all move to SSDs. And the problem is, is once data centers stop buying hard drives, we might not be able to because data centers are big buyers of hard drives and their money pays for the R&D and the trickle down cost. Once their buying power goes away, hard drives might not keep dropping in price, but when they switch completely to SSDs, SSD might pre prices might fall through the floor and as they come together, well, you don't use floppy drives anymore now, do you? Hard drives might suffer the same fate. I don't know that for sure. Boy, look at that, still seven minutes remaining. Parity storage spaces are slow to write. But when this is finished, I will copy the same data back to where it came from. This data is coming off of the 950 Pro, so there's no performance issues there. I will copy the data back off to show you that read speed is consistently just fine. Now there's six minutes left. I could either find something to talk about for six minutes or I can trim this video and jump to the finish because I am going to go ahead and let this finish for all 12,850 files. We'll be back in six minutes. So the file transfer is complete. And so what I'm going to do now is copy and oh, the 850 Evo will be enough. I'll hit paste. Let's see how well the drive does copying or reading files from the drive rather than writing to it, because writing to it is slow as molasses. Now currently it's doing all the small files first. It's got 8,000, 7,000, it's working on it. Now remember, small file transfer time never approaches your true sustained transfer. We need to get to the bigger files and then this will be more impressive. But so far it says, file. oh, there we go, there's 80, there's a hundred, now we're getting to a bigger file, there's 170, there's 200, 250. Read speed's fine. Windows storage spaces with parity and even these Seagate archive hard drives, which are slow writers in general. Um, the, the archive drives are not meant for running operating systems or running programs from them because they use shingled magnetic recording. I don't want to get into what shingled magnetic recording means, but for the drives labeled archive, they are meant for long-term storage of data and for read of data, not write of data. But look at that, we're getting 260, 270, Megabytes per second, it's varying, but you know, there's a lot of different files. Read speed is perfectly adequate. It's not rocket fast. If I put these uh, four drives together in a, a striped, a RAID 0 array, this performance would be much, much better, but you'd have no resiliency. A minute and 45 it claims. Of course, the, the performance is so variable, that number is uh, suspicious. It's currently doing about 45 megabytes a second. If it isn't obvious by now, let me be absolutely clear. Windows Storage Spaces parity is for long-term storage of data. It's not for running programs. It's not for data that you read and write every day. It's for bulk storage for the efficient use of, of multiple hard drives. It's kind of a niche application in that regard. Now, let me share something completely fun with you. I'm gonna minimize that and I'll close this. Let me grab something. USB 3 cable. If you have watched my game performance videos, I've mentioned in the past, when I first started doing game performance videos, well, Early in my channel, I actually downloaded and installed games to the computers I was testing, and very quickly I discovered that was a waste of time. So then I got a Western Digital MyBook 8 terabyte external hard drive, and I ran the games off of that. And there's several game videos you can see on my channel where there is an 8 terabyte hard drive sitting next to the computer. The problem with that is the uh, MyBook drives have Western Digital Red drives in them. They're 5400 RPM NAS drives. They're reliable, they are dependable, they're reasonably quick in terms of sequential transfer rate, but they're terrible in terms of random access. And what would happen is I would go a week without doing any game testing. The drive would sit over on my shelf, I wouldn't use it. I would plug it into a computer, 
I would load Steam up and there would be six or eight games that need to be updated. And it would take hours because it hadn't been connected in a while and because it had to download and patch the games. So now I have two solid state drives under the desk in a dual drive drive tray for, and I will show you. So I plug this in and this is my other storage pool. Here's the cool part about Windows Storage Spaces. I can plug in my external SSDs, which are set up, there's two of them, as a Windows Storage Space into every computer I do testing on and all of my files are there. And because they are SSDs, in fact, they're a pair of 960 gigabyte uh, SanDisk Ultra 2s, they're quick, large enough, yeah, it's kind of expensive to have that, but it saves me a lot of time. Now, the reason why it's yellow is it says low capacity add drives. I am currently using 1.54 terabytes of my 1.74 terabyte space. That is set up in a simple no resiliency configuration, meaning it's just bulk storage. If one of those drives failed, I would lose all my data, but it's, they're just games and other files that it doesn't matter. It provides convenience. Why did I set that up as Windows Storage Spaces rather than just setting it up as a striped array? If you go into disk management in Windows and you set up two drives as a striped array, which you absolutely can do, when you plug the drives into a different computer, depending upon how they were set up, what version of Windows, whether they're internal, external, they don't always auto mount. Sometimes they come up as foreign disks and you have to come in and import them. It works. There's nothing wrong with that. But I can never change the size without moving stuff around. If I ever decide that's not enough space, I can add a third drive, join it to these, and it just magically makes my space larger. That is so convenient. That's what's cool about Windows Storage Spaces. I plug that in, boom, it's auto-detected. How nice is that? Let me come down here to my shortcut. What happens if you lose a drive? I will show you. Let me start, shut down the computer. I'll go ahead and pl unplug my external for the moment. And the computer's off. And so now we're back into Windows. I have physically unplugged one of the drives from the computer. I did that with the machine off because I don't want to just unplug a drive unnecessarily. Now, if we go into Windows Storage Spaces, you'll notice something. Reduced resiliency, check the physical drive section, and it automatically opens it up. Warning, one of the drives is missing. Now, can I still access the data? Yep, there it is, World of Warships, not a problem. Can I copy it? Copy, I'll pick the Ultra 2, paste, and there it goes, copying away, no problem. So one of the drives is completely disconnected, and yet we can still read our data. Note, if I disconnect another one, then we can't. If you want two parity drives. If you want the ability to lose two drives instead of one, you will need seven total drives. I had to count my fingers for a second. If you have seven drives, you'll get the capacity of five of them if you set up double parity, or roughly five of them. Um, it does add some redundancy. The flip side with four drives is you could simple, simply set up um, no, you need five drives for three-way mirroring. Five drives would let you do, i sorry about that, you could do five drives for three-way mirroring, seven drives for, for two-way parity. It gets kind of complicated pretty quickly. How important is your data? Well, first of all, make sure you have a backup somewhere. Make sure you have a backup that's not in your physical location. And look at that, the read speed is 300 megabytes a second with one drive missing. So it performs perfectly well with a missing drive. That almost might perform better with a missing drive. I'm going to cancel that. There's no, read, no reason to keep doing that. 
When I plug the drive back in, it'll automatically become part of it. What if I want to remove it? Maybe the drive failed. I don't want to add it. No worries. Let me show you how to do that. Change settings. Remove. Remove. Removing the drive from the pool. Now, let's pretend for a minute that drive failed. How do we get resiliency back? Well, we have three drives. So long as your data will fit on those drives with, a, with the reduced uh, drive size, you can absolutely go back to three and regain your resiliency. And then maybe send that drive back for warranty service or order a new drive on Amazon, which they'll have for you in two days if you're an Amazon Prime member. Removing the drive from the pool. It's not instant. It's, this is not the sort of thing that happens instantly. And here we are back to three drives. We've removed that drive from the pool. That actually took several minutes to run, so I trimmed that out. But if you look, the yellow is gone and no longer says reduced resiliency. At this point, I could disconnect another drive and we would not lose any data. Why? Because I've shrunk the window storage space from four to three, removed that drive from the storage space array, and it regained resiliency by putting the parity across the three drives that I have. Note, there's not much data on the drive. If I had done that, when the drives were 50% full, that might have taken hours. Why? Because it would have to rebuild the parity on the data all the way across the drive. But it does give you the benefit of being able to go back to resiliency, back to parity, without adding another drive. Now, if you're at three, you can't go down to two because you can't switch to mirror, but um, this is the benefit to four, is you can lose a drive, remove it from the window storage space, uh, switch it down to three. When you get another drive, install it, add it to the storage space using the Add Drives button, it's the third one down from there, and then click Optimize Drive Usage, which will rebalance the data across the four drives. I'm not going to show you that because that would take a while and this video has become long enough as it is. You get the point. I'm trying to show this in enough detail to be interesting without being boring and hopefully it's not been boring. Windows Storage Spaces is useful in that it provides some, some flexibility and options that traditional RAID does not. I love the ability to shrink and add drives, which again is not new for Windows, uh, it's not new for computers in general, but it's new for Windows, at least in Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. Um, I would strongly suggest that you first make sure you have a data backup. And then you consider something like this if you have a lot of data that would be a pain to recover. My use case for using Windows Storage Spaces is simply this. I now have over 18 terabytes of data backed up online with Backblaze. They will FedEx me hard drives to get me all that data back. I'll pay them for the hard drives, they'll send them to me, I'll copy the data off, and I will FedEx the drives back. The problem is that takes time. And it's inconvenient. It would be much easier to simply go, oh, did I lose a hard drive? No worries. Take it out, put another one in, switch, you know, remove it, add the new drive in, click rebalance. I don't have to worry about it. The bulk of my data is long-term storage and I don't need it immediately. But about one and a half terabytes of the data that currently resides on my Windows storage spaces at home is data that I'd want back relatively quickly. I could download it from Backblaze. I have a fairly decent internet connection. This is another layer of protection so that I don't have to. I hope this was interesting and informative. If you like this video, like it. If you don't, don't. Remember to subscribe to my channel, the big huge red button right down there. Questions and comments down below in the comment section. Check out the video description for all the other links on this computer and uh, to New Egg and Amazon for all the stuff. Hopefully this was helpful and informative. Um, my first attempt at doing something this, uh, this sort of data intensive. I hope it was useful to you. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.